Viewer discretion is advised. Jump into that by itself, we're gonna join it! 27 men and women from around the world will meet in the heart of Central Virginia with the same goal. Become a Chesterfield County Police Officer. Sir, you're under arrest. Together, they will be tested as they take the journey. It is the morning of day one for the recruits of the Chesterfield County Police Department's 73rd Basic Academy. After a brief new employee orientation period, the recruits will meet their training staff. Hurry up and get the floor right! Hurry up! Hurry up and get the floor right! Hurry up! You're a know-it-all! You should know exactly what to do! You are a know-it-all, aren't you, Bert? Um, at first I'm, I'm kind of scrambling. I'm a little bit uh, all over the place mentally. Because I'm like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? Trying to get my mind in line. Um, but, but as you start to catch up with it, and as your mind starts to handle it more and more, it's still very much a pressurized situation. It's still very much um, urgently needing to do things over and over. Um, but it starts to, um, you start to adjust the level slowly, I would, I would say. Seven, three, yes, sir. Their first supervisor is Training Sergeant Jessica Seidel. Sergeant Seidel is a 13-year veteran of the Chesterfield County Police Department. When we meet the recruits for the first time, typically it's out at the flagpoles during our first face-to-face -face interaction. We are purposely stressing them at that point to see how it is that they react to stress, that they can keep themselves under control uh, in a stressful environment. And we're looking for strong but respectful personalities. We're looking for people who are going to be dedicated, that want to be here, and that want to be here for the right reasons. This is the first time the recruits will come face to face with their lead training officer, who will be with them every moment for the next seven months, Master Officer Kyle Woods. My name is Kyle Woods. I am a Master Training Officer here at the uh, Training Academy. I am the lead basic instructor uh, for the 73rd Basic. So, when I say that, it means that this is a very important test. We've been using three times throughout the Academy. We, uh, we PT the recruits pretty intensely for the first time uh, being here. There's a few different reasons for that. We really want to see where they're at, for one. Um, we want to mentally uh, make them commit to this is what it's going to be like um, on our worst days. We want to make sure that they can handle it. And we want to make sure that they know that their bodies can be pushed farther than what they originally anticipated it could be. Corporal Chris Scuderi is the recruit's secondary training instructor, but will be the lead instructor for the 74th Basic Academy beginning in January 2019. I'm Corporal Chris Scuderi. I am a training officer here at the Chesapeake County Police Academy. My role at the 73rd Basic Academy is to be the secondary officer. Um, my job is to be as heavy-handed as I possibly can with them and make sure that I correct all their mistakes properly in a timely fashion. It easily was uh, the most difficult PT that I've done in terms of a test. Um, we had already been PT'd for hours before that point and uh, we were under some stress, a little bit of yelling, stuff like that. And uh, most of us had sore legs, sore arms, and uh, it was under stressful situations that I haven't experienced in a test format. We're doing catapult, so pretty much you're stretching out and you uh, bring your, when you uh, extend your arms, you keep them there and you bring your legs up until you reach your arms, then you continue to do it down the length of the gym. Gotta build strength, gotta finish it, gotta get through it. We're doing it as a team. As the class continues to push through their first few days, 27 soon become 21. Some recruits are not able to meet the demands of the academy, while others suffer injuries and will be moved to a later class after being medically cleared. Um, I would say that it's, it's unfortunate that I got separated that way and that um, I was really looking forward to working with this class. They were a great class and stuff. Um, going through the process and memorizing everything and learning to, to really be a team with them um, was really important to me. And that's unfortunate that I, I did get injured, but um, I'm looking forward to the 74th and hoping that uh, their class is just as good as this one was and 
that we can all get together. I expect that moving forward that somebody will take the place of a leader amongst them where they will be able to uh, kind of rely on that person or multiple people and work together as a team. Uh, most important thing is uh, when you're in this kind of situation, you're, you're completely stressed uh, on every aspect, whether it be mentally or physically, that you have someone you can rely on. If that someone is your whole group of people, that is ultimately the best thing uh, that we can do for them. And, and I hope that someone will pick up those reins and, and really take that over. I would like to see all of us get more cohesive as a group and start um, improving, whether it's in PT or in driving, shooting, or academically, and kind of pull together a little bit more, because I think right now we've kind of been a little bit frayed, a little bit disorganized. So looking forward, making less mistakes, coming together as a group, improving ourselves and our performance overall. I think the core group that we have right now is we go well together. Honestly, I think that's just going to get better and better as, as we you know go along and help each other out and all of us are going to make it. First week in the academy, it was, it was rough. It was probably something that I'll never forget, a day in my life. Um, sitting out, and then plus I was in the front seat uh, when you first walk in the classroom. So the first thing I remember is uh, Sergeant Sadell coming in, just yelling, telling us all to get out. Then some of the rest of the instructors were outside. Uh, we get out in front of the flagpole, just getting chewed out. I did like have thoughts in my mind, like, wow, what did I didn't get myself into? I never thought it would be this intense. Especially, I never, like, it was most, one of the most intense things I've done in my life, well, felt in my life. Recruits of the Chesterfield County Police Department's 73rd Basic Academy are entering the second phase of their training, but are about to face mental, emotional, and physical challenges that will push them far past their comfort zone. Driving and firearms, we put that towards the beginning of the academy because if it's something that you just can't overcome, if it's something that's just not for you, uh, you'll make that decision um, yourself. So if they can't do it, they can't do it. Uh, but Really, the next month and a half to two months is going to be pretty stressful for them. Uh, they have driving, shooting, and they come straight back in defensive tactics, which is uh, physically demanding um, every day. And that, from defensive tactics, it jumps straight into uh, taser, pepper spray, and it jumps straight into CPR and first aid. It is a long month and a half, two months of just physically and mentally demanding every day outside of work, at work, it really does push them as far as we can push them. Right now we're just in driving um, training. We're trying to learn some pursuits, some driving techniques, reversing, skid pan, like recovering from um, off when you go off the track and stuff like that. During Emergency Vehicle Operations Force, or EVA, recruits learn to safely and appropriately operate a police vehicle during various situations. They must pass all courses. It's a good time. It's exciting. Uh, a little bit of a spin out, but it's a learning experience. Uh, well, we just did speed laps. It was three and a half laps on the course. Uh, the goal of it is to go as fast as you can. It's timed. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, definitely not really what I expected. I thought I'd be a lot more relaxed with it. It was a little stressful for me just because I'm not used to driving that fast on uh, so many turns and all that. We always going into the weather. Like, we don't know what's going to happen, so we've got to be prepared for every situation. So the skip pad, learning how to do that, that's pretty much the best thing to do. Like, preparing us for the most part. Uh, today they just took us on hot laps, uh, which is basically just as fast as you can go around the whole thing. Uh, three laps a piece, counterclockwise and clockwise. It was, it was kind of intense. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, you definitely go, don't go that fast on a regular day. Of 
we're practicing the qual course today to get ready for tomorrow for our first uh, scoring for tomorrow. The recruits are required to pass several different courses of fire during firearms training. If they are unable to do so, they will be removed from the academy. So, started shooting for the first time a couple days ago. First time holding a gun. When I say that I hyperventilated, um, that's not a lie. <laughs> I was making the instructors nervous. Um, yeah, it was for the past couple days we've just been shooting and we did our first qual course running through it and it did pretty well. Defensive tactics combines physical endurance and mental toughness. The recruits will learn to safely handcuff and when necessary, subdue a suspect. Sir, you're under arrest. We are practicing the skill to learn takedowns. We're doing it right now in the fast speed, somewhere that we see like if we can concentrate when we tire or when we are chasing someone. Recruits are exposed to taser and pepper spray in order to justify using these less than lethal pieces of equipment. We're about to get back sword sprayed, pepper sprayed. Um, I'm thinking it's going to hurt a lot. A little nervous, but I think it's necessary to be a police officer. These processes are supervised by training and medical staff. After exposure, the recruits will be able to testify to their effects from personal experience. The recruits will also be able to empathize with suspects before and after exposure. If you're in a fight with a bad guy and your partner accidentally sprays you or sprays the suspect's face and the suspect moves and he gets you on the other side, are you going to be able to tap out, disengage, and say, I'm done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you have an objective to achieve, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've got to accomplish a mission, right? Yes, sir. So you got to fight through. Yes, sir. That's what this is about. I'm very nervous. Um, couldn't hardly get any sleep last night. Haven't had an experience like this before. And don't know what's coming. Don't know how bad it's going to sting you, how bad it's going to hurt. And just hoping for the best right now. This is about to suck, but it's, we all got to do it. It'll be worth it. It's it's just gonna happen regardless. Go! Run fast! Intimidation. Speak against oppression or intimidation. <laughs> okay. Ooh. You're good. You're good. Oh my god. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Right. Breathe. Sir, you're under arrest. Let's go, Hicks. You got it, buddy. I'll get the other one, Hicks. I'll get the other one. Stand Just right there, Hicks. Don't move. I'm hating it. I'm hating it. It's a big head. Stand up. Keep your head up. Sit over here, you. Nope, nope, nope. Strike, strike. Get back. Weapon, weapon. Uh, it hurts. It stings. Come on. Lies the pen. Right? Right? No. You get through it. <sighs> Awful, sir. I feel like my face is literally on fire. It's definitely very effective, so I would have to use it in a situation where I would deem it extremely necessary because of the effects. This is her. Gotta stay strong, guy. Come on. Come on. Hey, hi, mom. Hi, family. We're all doing it together. We got it. Come on. It's just a little pain. Keep it up. That was excruciating. Felt like 10 years. It was just very painful. That was the worst experience, or worst pain I've ever felt. Nothing like it. We got sprayed after lunch, and it was hell in a can. <laughs> I don't wish that stuff on my worst enemy. It was pretty tough. So we're getting taste today. We're having our volunteer exposures, and I think we're all a little nervous. 
um, how bad it's gonna hurt and where I'm gonna fall. And hopefully somebody can hold me up because I'm pretty big. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous, but I also think that it's gonna be a lot better than getting pepper sprayed, so. Put this into two lines and get you guys through it, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any more rings can be saved back. All right. We'll thank you later. Uh-huh. Sir. Five ready? Yes, sir. Seven. Uh, ready? Yes, sir. Ah! Oh! 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 Some people don't bleed at all. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. Um. But it, it, it hurt a lot. All right. Bones, you're ready. Yes, sir. Five ready. Yes, sir. I heard a lot worse than I thought it was going to. We're doing all right. Yeah, I couldn't move my lower half, but you know, it's all right now. <laughs> We're fine. My butt is still vibrating. Bobby's <laughs> ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It hurts, but you have to go to the bathroom. This is this is a good experience. They can keep my taser. I don't need it. In the big sword. I'm good. Give me a, give me a scale of one to ten. A thousand. It felt like all of this right here was just getting tired and tired. Like it just wanted to crack, but it's good. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. We started off with uh, Evoc, the driving. That was a great time. Had a lot of fun driving fast, braking hard, learning how to pull people over, and uh, all that good stuff. It was it was a lot of learning, uh, but all of this has been uh, shooting. Was another great time. Uh, I love to shoot, but had a lot of bad habits to break to learn how to shoot properly. Uh, so that was a big learning curve for a lot of us, especially people that have been shooting a lot. Uh, but that was that was great fun. And then we went on to get pepper sprayed, which was probably the worst experience of my life. Uh, I uh, just thinking about it, I think I feel it in my eyes sometimes. Uh, Taser was a very interesting weapon to learn. I think a lot of us are actually looking forward to doing uh, building clearing and things like that, getting to really get some movement in there and apply all of what we've learned into one sort of cohesive unit and really just come together as a team and, and knock that out. I think it'll be a lot of fun. The 73rd uh, basic recruit class so far has done their defensive tactics. They have done their EVOC driving and their firearms. Um, and those courses are designed to be difficult and challenging. It helps them come together as a team and kind of reinforces that team mentality. I will say to this point, though, these recruits have kind of had some resistance in regards to the team building. Um, we're lacking a level of maturity, and I say that in regards to we don't have the older recruits that we normally have. 
And so they are coming together and they are making progress. We're just not quite where we need to be, but we're going to get there. So the recruit class is getting ready to start learning traffic law and then they're going to learn traffic stops um, that's broken up into two sections, regular traffic stops and then of course high risk. Uh, traffic is a huge component of what our uniformed officers do every day and so this is extremely important for these recruits before they transition to what we call their field experience training. It's a huge learning experience for them. It reinforces everything that they've learned to this point. Um, and then once they come back from that, they're obviously going to be in class a lot. Um, there's a lot of legal stuff that they have to learn, and, and there's only so many ways that you can teach that. And so there will be a transition from a lot of this hands-on stuff uh, into more of a classroom environment. Traffic stops are the cornerstone of police work. The class will be trained to conduct stops appropriately and safely for all parties involved. Today we're getting some practice in on some traffic stops. It's been a, a really eye-opening experience so far. It's just all the different stuff that can happen and what can go wrong and how you got to react. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, a lot of good training going on and I'm happy to be here. Oftentimes in this sort of work you're going to come come up with situations that are unpredictable and a lot of times that can be with unruly or kind of belligerent people and it's important to remember that you do have the authority to uh, enforce the law. Traffic stop week was fun. Uh, it was pretty intense um, and we learned a lot about how to approach vehicle and sometimes you don't know what to expect in those vehicles. So it's always uh, for us to be aware of our officer safety and knowing that we're approaching a vehicle but we don't know what's inside and what could hurt us. So it was pretty fun. I don't know. Driver, turn your car off. Do it now. Uh, right now we're doing felony traffic stops. We're going to be doing a mix of hiding things on the suspects for us to find, as well as making sure we have our right commands on felony stops to make sure we're doing everything to policy and as well to um, officer safety. Just making sure you're getting all the commands out and making sure you're getting people out one by one in the safest manner possible for both us and the public. It puts a whole other perspective on, on the traffic stops because things you could see blatantly in the day are completely invisible in the night and, you know, you can really be taken advantage of as an officer if you're not going to pay attention and be observant and make sure you're doing things piece by piece and taking, you know, don't take anything for granted and look at anything, you know, don't know, you can't overlook anything. Push and hold. Yeah. I am not a big drinker. Today is DUI day and half the class is split up. So half the class will drink and the other half of the class will test them and then the next day we're gonna swap um, so right now we're in the process of uh, drinking and then the other class will test this pretty soon right here at the top right you see those mm -hmm. during wet lab training the, the recruits are brought to a safe level of impairment the process is monitored by certified instructors and the recruits training officer we get them impaired because they need to feel what it's like to be at a, the illegal limit, right? To the, the 0 0.08, the point zero 0.08. They need to feel what it's like to be there based on how much alcohol they've consumed. They can use that to reference, hey, I, I stopped someone, they said they only had you know, two or three beers. And from their experience, they can kind of reference where they were after two or three beers. The second problem to that is it gives the other recruits that are not drinking an opportunity to do field sobriety on someone that is actually impaired. Right, so someone that has consumed alcohol, it's under the influence of alcohol, and then exhibits the clues that we look for on all of our field sobriety tests. Feeling pretty good, sir. We got seven sevens, labeled the cup, we're all set for today. I'm betting a chef around here, right? On a person. Okay, Chung doesn't see it, but we'll get there.
Field sobriety training starts as a basic, why do we want to arrest people for DUI? What, what is the motivation behind doing that? Um, it's obviously very dangerous for people to drive drunk, so we want to drive that message home to get them excited about the class. And then we'll start talking about certain DUI code sections and you know things of that nature. And then we get into the field sobriety test uh, where it's very, very long processes. We have to break down every test, you know, piece by piece, just kind of getting them, you know, fluent with the terminology and how to administer the tests. Um, once we feel like they're comfortable with that, which hopefully by the third day of the DUI course, um, the next two days is when they actually get to get to drink, um, and then they perform the field sobriety test on each other. They all have to administer the field sobriety test properly and almost word for word from what the standard is, like how we're supposed to administer the test, um, because they have to be done a certain way every single time, and we can't let them go out there not doing them properly. So they actually have a certain amount of attempts to be able to administer the field sobriety test properly before further action is taken. Right now, all we have is one point. It's K-O. Dude, we have L-O-L-O-P-Q-R. And yeah, K-O. Today we're learning about forensics. It's uh, very interesting. Very, um, you have to be detail oriented. Very time consuming as well. We had a little practical in the classroom. You really realize every detail matters. Today we did triangulation, which is a method of measurement for a crime scene. So essentially you take either two points of like normally corners and you'll measure the middle of each piece of evidence so you know where it is in the room and you can recreate exactly the crime scene and what was happening on a sketch. All right, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, All right, this week uh, we were doing building searches and we were also doing active shooter scenarios. And right now we are doing um, warrant services and high-risk traffic stops. Everything's going really good. Uh, we did really well on uh, building searches and active shooters. They actually told us that, which was probably one of the first times we actually got complimented. Uh, on this, we have a couple people fail, but I'm pretty sure right. we're going like, to pass and push through this because it's really not too hard. We, just, we know what to do. We just need to execute. All right, come over here and talk. Before heading out into field experience training, the 73rd Basic Academy takes their oath of office, a day they will never forget. So it's obviously a big time for the recruits, um, them actually getting sworn in, seeing, they're really seeing their badges for the first time and being able to take them home with them for when, before they go to FET. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me, I do solemnly swear or affirm I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the ordinances of the County of Chesterfield. And the ordinances of the County of Chesterfield. And I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as a Chesterfield County Police Officer. As a Chesterfield County Police Officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. You think about this day in the first week, but you don't think it's actually going to come. Um, it's just a surreal feeling. Um, all the effort and hard work that we've been putting in it just pays off today, and it's it's nice. Excited for Friday. Get out there on the road. Feeling different? Yes, sir. How so? More responsibility. More responsibility. Do you feel like a weight just set on your shoulders? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, when you're outside of here that you can enforce the law. And so when you hit an FET, okay, right? When you're with another officer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't don't get that Superman syndrome and think you're better than everybody else and you're stronger and bigger and better because you're not. You're a human being just like everybody else you need to continue to act like such, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Just because this goes on your chest doesn't mean you're the greatest, okay? It just means you're the person that people are going to be looking to. You're the one that's going to be solving the problems. Don't create problems. You solve them. Correct? Yes, yes sir. Uh, just remember, when you guys come back here, um, you're back in your fatigues. Um, when you're with the officers who you're riding with for FET, ask them questions, get into conversations with them. That's all fine. Uh, attitude, um, tardiness, laziness. As a training officer, you worry. Um, so you, you definitely have that little little worry factor. You hope that they're going to be riding with like the right officer for them 
that can you know teach them things about the road to prepare them for the rest of the academy. Um, but again, it's, it's it's really an, it's it's an exciting time for them. Um, but we try to put it in perspective for to them that you know just because this is happening today, you're not done. Uh, we're definitely like pretty tight. Um, we've definitely grown together um, through the PT sessions through the long days. Um, so it's it's nice to all be together and uh, get sworn in. It's nice. Uh, going into F FET, just it just seemed like it was going to be like almost like a glorified ride along. So it was going to be like, I'm going out there, but I also have body armor on. I also have a loaded gun. I also, you know, they let, let us drive sometimes. So it's like, I, I'm riding along and this is super exciting, but like, holy crap. I'm also like, the public doesn't know that I'm, I'm still a recruit. Like they don't get that. So when you're out there doing stuff, you still have to put on the show that you know what you're doing at this point. FET was awesome. It was great to uh, get out on the road, actually experience what the job is going to be like. Uh, welcome kind of vacation from the academy. Um, it's cool to see what's really in store from us, for us, aside from all of the academy work. It kind of puts a light at the end of the tunnel and a real something to look forward to at the end of the academy. We have come to the end of their required training, almost. And I say almost because one of the most important things that we're getting ready to encounter is scenario week for them. They have gone through traffic stops, use of force, DT, firearms, you name it, they've had training on it. And now it's time to see if they can put everything together into one package and perform to the level that we need them to. The recruits training is nearly complete. However, the next two weeks will test them like never before. Just to keep him separated, to keep her away from whatever he so practical week is a series of scenarios that goes over all the DCJS objectives that have a practical application that we need to get through before graduating the academy. So that includes domestics, domestic assaults, traffic stops, vehicle searches. So from the training officer's perspective, uh, we're looking to have the recruits do all the things that we've taught them, right? And be able to implement everything that they've learned in class and the hands-on application to doing it with actual live role players uh, in a more realistic setting so that we can kind of gauge where they're at, fine tune a few things, prepare them to be practical testing um you know they these scenarios were around for a long time i've actually been a part of practical week for way longer than i've been a training officer here at the academy um and we the scenarios were developed with uh dcgs objectives in mind there are certain standards that we have to meet certain things we have to we have to teach as well as either have them apply it in a written test or in a practical scenario um here at chesterfield we are sometimes given an option to have it as a written test, a written question, or a practical uh, exercise. We do a lot of practicals because we want to go above and beyond what the minimum standard actually is. Um, so when these practicals are designed, it's designed to cover all the objectives and give recruits exposures to different types of scenarios. So during practical week, when the recruit does something that would be an officer safety violation, the scenario is automatically failed. We won't let anyone pass if there's an officer safety violation. The reason for that is it's something that's not going to be tolerated because we don't know uh, at what point in time we would ever come across a, uh, a situation or you know some time where we would have to use all of our officers' safety to make sure that we go home and we make sure that everyone else goes home. So the important thing that we remember and kind of how we reference it is uh, if you knew tomorrow that you were going to be in a fight for your life, would you start training today? So that mentality goes into that. We want to make sure that they are always prepared. It becomes second nature to them and that uh, they have the best perception of what could happen once they get onto the road. We do a lot of group uh, corrective PT sessions. And the reason we do that is because 
this is a team effort, right? We're all in this together, really, as a police department, and they need to know right off the bat, uh, very early in the academy, that if one person in the department does something wrong, right, something seriously wrong, it blackens the eye of the entire department, right, no matter what. Um, so we try, we try to instill that really early with them as recruits. We'll take really small things and show them how even a small thing can affect the entire class, just as, as police officers, small thing, big thing, whatever it is, um, can affect the entire department as a whole. So the 73rd has finished their scenario week. They have proven to us that they can do the job. Uh, and I think that they are going to be fantastic at it. They have worked hard. They deserve everything that lies ahead of them. Uh, and I am excited to see how they are going to impact the community of Chesterfield County. Um, they are the officers that the citizens deserve and I'm excited to work side by side with them throughout their career. As a law enforcement officer, so once the recruits get past practical week as a training officer, we, we're already in that mentor role, right? So once they get through practical week, we really are just becoming their peers at that point. We're preparing them that, uh, you know, once you graduate and get through FTO, you come back here and you hang out with us, you say hi to us, you, you know, we're your friends at that point, right? We're your coworkers, we're your friends, we've seen you through and grow from uh, a civilian to a police officer. And it's very rewarding to, to see where you've come from from the first day to where you are uh, when you graduate and you go into FTO. So from the training officer aspect, once you get through practical week, uh, it is extremely gratifying just to, to see the excitement on your face, to know because we've been there. And it, it's just so much excitement that is happening uh, at one, one time. Well, the 73rd Basic Academy, Practical Week, and all of their academy testing is finally over. Stover, Jai, Burn, and It's almost graduation day. The recruits are issued their first ever Chesterfield County Police vehicles. The department has a special surprise for recruit Kim and Hour. Let me see if we can find his daddy's car. Oh, oh ooh. <laughs> Crown Victoria. Uh, used to be my dad's car, so it feels pretty cool, you know. Ah, this one. We get the ride where he rode for like eight years. Uh, I just want to say thanks, Dad. You know, following your footsteps was always a dream. Um, you're a great role model. So, thanks for everything you do. Every, you know, serving your country, your community. Uh, greatest guy I know. Thirteen, coming hour. Low mileage, but it'll work. Uh, you know, it's extremely exciting. We've been waiting for this day for about as long as I can remember. Just uh, a little anxious, ready to kind of get on with it. Now, Recruit Mizell is also following in his father's footsteps. You know, it's growing up, having my dad as a police officer, I, uh, I always, you know, you always dream of the lights and sirens and the patrol car and um, being able to drive around as that, you know, that icon for the community and uh, having my dad, you know, always idolizing it and even from as a kid being rested up on the cruiser, I have a picture, my mom has a picture of it, um, means a lot just getting the car, just seeing it. Just want to say thank you to my dad um, for always being supportive and, you know, always sleeping all night or all, all day and then still getting up anyway even though he works midnights, coming to my lacrosse games and being issued a cruiser now and having all the surreal stuff come come true, I just want to say thank you for um, supporting me and not pushing me towards this field, but placing me in this field and uh, giving me all the support and um, the help that I need to uh, become hopefully as close to him as possible, as close to you as I as I can. Just before graduating, the commanding officers of the Chesterfield County Police Department visit the class. They share their advice and experiences with them and review their expectations. 
Are you the same person now that you were 33 weeks ago? No. 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 And uh, you will not be the same person in another 33 weeks than you are today. Uh, but there are things that ground you. And the things that ground you are the things that define you. And part of what defines you, part of your identity, is uh, how you spend your time recreationally. So I'm going to take the opportunity now to thank you for every little thing you do going forward. When you sacrifice yourself and you inconvenience yourself and you do direct traffic in the rain, or God forbid, you do have to give your life in service to this county, I'm thanking you now. I'm thanking you now for, for carrying out the mission. Right, because every single day and night when you go to work and you do your job, you're going to be asked to put the community before yourself. And that is what you are getting paid to do. So you know that going into this. Everybody clear on it? Yes, yes sir. Traditionally, the night before graduation is family night in Chesterfield County. I feel pretty good. I feel blessed. I feel grateful that my family is here with me. Everyone's family is here. I feel pretty good about it. Having my family come down here, um, everyone getting together in the gym, eating dinner, um, chowing down, seeing the video at the end. Uh, just a great experience. Um, glad that they come. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And that's going to be amazing. So. It's so exciting. I'm so happy to see them all. Um, I don't know, it's like the best thing ever. And for them seeing the accomplishment, it's awesome. Couldn't be more happy. It is a celebration of a job well done and a welcome sight for the recruits. Uh, we're setting up for graduation. Uh, it's tomorrow. Pretty excited about that. And we're here to do graduation rehearsal, um, make sure everything looks good for tomorrow, practice the code of ethics, uh, make sure we all sound good and look good for tomorrow. Made it this far, excited to get out on the road, um, not have to worry about the academy and use everything we learned uh, out on the road. Lose the pens, Adams. Lose the pens. My you, pens? You do what but you they're want. my pens. Uh, the feeling is unparalleled. It is the most rewarding feeling for all the hard work that we've done. It's amazing. Thinking about it every day for eight months, and I can't believe the day is finally here. It has flown by in a way, and it also hasn't in a way. So it's been a great experience all around. It doesn't feel real yet. It's uh, kind of setting in that uh, we got the uniform on, and it feels good, but ready to get out there and get at it, get on the roads feels fantastic. It's one of those things where after this academy, it, it's the best feeling. Work so hard and it's finally graduation day and everything that we've done is a culmination to this point. I'm not giddy, I'm stoked. Mm -hmm. It feels surreal. I can't believe it's happening. I'm still getting little butterflies in my stomach right now. So, feel good though. It's a good feeling. I'm excited. It's one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. I had help with a lot of um, training and uh, PT wise from the training academy and the staff there. Um, I mean, it's, it feels great. So, if I had the words to describe it, I'd tell you here, but I don't. Um, it's been an overwhelming eight months, and I couldn't have gotten through with it. Uh, gotten through it all without the help of the other recruits, the great training staff, and uh, my wife, who I love very much. Amazing. I cannot wait to finally do what I wanted to do for so long. I'm um, proud of a whole class. They've all worked really hard, and as a class president, I'm happy for everybody. So hopefully we can stay in touch as much as I hope. It's, it's almost surreal that it's over, and that it's like, oh, Monday morning, go out on the road. And so it's like, not like FBT where you're like, oh, I'm gonna come back to the academy in a couple weeks or in a couple days. This is like, this is for real. And it's like, it's a weird feeling. Feels amazing, exciting. A little nervous for FTO, the FTO, but I'm excited nonetheless. 
I didn't think this day would come. Uh, it's just kind of surreal right now. Um, leading up to it, getting ready for it, now we're here. Never thought this day would come. It feels great. Lots of lots of pride and gratitude coming from it, and uh, it's just uh, it's a lot of pride. It's hard to put it in any other words. But um, we all just hope we do everything right, and we can uh, be everything that we wanted to be. It's awesome to be a Chesapeake County Police Officer. This uh, department, it's one of the best department I've ever seen in my life, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Thank you for everybody that gave me the opportunity to be here. It's uh, everything I ever dreamed of. Um, it's just extremely exciting. I can't wait to get out there and uh, start working, actually. It feels great. It feels like everything I've worked towards the last 34 weeks, I think. It's all coming together and amazing. Never been happier. It's Monday. I'll be right out there. It feels awesome. Never thought this day could come sooner. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm mostly excited to get out there. It feels absolutely amazing. 34 weeks of hard work and dedication. I'm just glad that there's 18 of us strong and ready to just go out in the community and make a difference. So I'm looking forward to it. Feels really good. Finally, glad we're finally done and finally getting to like actually go out there and do real police work. So really looking forward to it and ready to go. Uh, nervous and exciting all at the same time. Excited to get out there and do new stuff. A little nervous for how it goes. I think they're going to be uh, good police officers coming out of this class. I'm proud of them. Feel good. Feel good. They're uh, they're excited. I'm excited. It's gonna be a good day. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Edward Pierpont, Director of Training. And to my left is Sergeant Seidel. She's the sergeant over our basic training. I feel good about it. This is a, a good group of people, and I think that they're going to be an asset to their community. And I'm just hoping that they learn a lot in field training. On behalf of the Chesapeake County Police Department, we would like to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the 73rd Basic Police Academy. At this time, we would ask that you please stand as the members of the 73rd Basic enter the room. Then remain standing for the posting of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the invocation. Forward. March. At this time, I'd like to ask County Administrator Dr. Joseph Casey to please come forward to share his remarks. Good afternoon. I really do think it's fitting that they have these uh, graduation ceremonies in churches when they can, uh, because it just shows you that the faith that's behind uh, the institution of law enforcement, faith that guides many of us in our daily lives, is, is unified today. Um, you can see from the, the guests that were recognized, uh, that those in the front row here, you are never alone. I see my friends from Hanover and Henrico County. I think, I think I saw someone from the state police as well. And again, a few other localities represented. Uh, again, uh, you are not alone. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a lot of little rivalries between the armed forces during training uh, that you probably have shared some nice stories amongst yourselves. I'm also aware that we have two uh, of the candidates here before us that come from different countries. Uh, and again, that just shows you what the, the depth and breadth of Chesterfield is, the depth and breadth of, of the police department. Um, now I'm going to digress for a second, you know, when we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance just before, and, and, and again, I have a job where I probably say the pledge almost every day, and sometimes you just say the words and you just don't listen to them, but you know how it ended with, you know, liberty and, and justice for all, um, you know, what you do as police officers, you know, we say that as citizens, we say that as people, that that's what we want, you are the people who actually make that happen, you create those liberties that are out there for people to have and you are the justice for all. Oh, now I'd like to ask Colonel Jeff Katz to please come forward to share his remarks. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming as we assemble to reflect upon the 34-week journey these men and women before us have undertaken. As promised, this has been a transformational journey, one in which not everyone completed. There have been injuries, hurt feelings, self-doubt, perseverance. There have been exceptional solo performances, noteworthy team efforts, 
and regretfully and inevitably lackluster solar performances. As time went on and lessons progressed, so did your learning, and as by design, as did your performance. One of the reasons basic recruit training holds so much value in your developmental process is because it serves as somewhat of a coming attractions preview of your future life as a Chesterfield County police officer, where you will experience injuries, hurt feelings, self-doubt, perseverance, exceptional solo performances, noteworthy team efforts, and regretfully on occasion, a lackluster solo performance. The next 25 or 30 years, will, like the Academy, will begin at a snail's pace. And like the Academy, it will begin to fly by with ever-increasing speed. It will embark upon countless selfless acts, many times without a thank you. And by now, you should know that's the career you've signed up for. You should know that it is through this selfless bond, oddly and uniquely forged in sweat, blood, and yes, on occasion, tears, that you will make a contribution to our community that can never be fully understood or appreciated or repaid. Now is your time. May God bless you and your families on this journey before you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank you all for joining us today in celebration, especially all of our family members and close friends who stuck with us every day and every night. I know it wasn't easy to hear us come home sore and tired, probably complaining about how hard our day might have been. But I speak for everyone in the 73rd class when I tell you it was very much appreciated and helped us more than you'll ever know. I would also like to thank the members of the training staff. Without your tough love and guidance, we would not be the same men and women here today that started July 30th, 2018. Now let's take it back to the first day. The start of our journey, which happened to be the coolest day in our lives, looking back. It wasn't the coolest day because of the torrential downpour, or the push-ups and the puddles, and especially not the crab walks, but because it was our first day and our steps fulfilling many of our dreams to become police officers. Yes, we knew there would be yelling, lots of PT, and challenges along the way, but all 18 of us were in it for the right reasons and bought into the program here at the Academy. Throughout the last eight months, we faced a lot of challenges, such as pepper spray and taser, to name a couple. Through each of the challenges we came together, through each of them we shared many laughs, which helped ease the anxiety and pressure we faced every day. Looking at all of us now, I know we aren't the same people who started that rainy summer day in July. Not because of the pounds we lost, but the knowledge, confidence, skill, and strength we gained. I'm very proud to say I was part of the 73rd class, and even more proud to be part of the Chesterfield family. I know my classmates feel the exact same way. I wouldn't trade these experiences in the academy for anything except the sand pit. We will apply all the training and experience we had in the academy every day on the road. If you think about the journey never stops, we are only hitting a milestone along the way. This milestone is the first of many. Finishing field training will be next, then completing our probationary period after that. Our time at the academy has set us up to achieve these goals. This is because our training officers drilled into us to never give up and always succeed no matter the task. So I ask of my class to never forget the lessons learned here and take with them a winning mindset to every call we go on. Finally, thank you, thank all 17 of you for believing in yourselves and one another to keep showing up every day to get 100%. I know I've gained lifelong friends and all you have too. In July we were individuals, today we graduated as one. Thank you.
partially. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a police officer with Chesterfield County Police Department. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Order. March. 73rd. Forward. March. Up now. Thanks. As a law enforcement officer. My fundamental duty is to serve the community, to save our lives and property, to protect the innocent against the savage, the weak against the pressure of intimidation, and the peaceful against violence and disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all people, to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied, as an example to all, and will behave in a manner which does not bring discredit to me or my agency. I will maintain greater strong in the face of danger, storm, or ridicule, develop self-restraint, and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest and God indeed, in both my personal and official life, I will be exemplary and obey the laws of the land and the regulations of my department. Whatever I see or hear of a confidential nature, or that is invited to me in my official capacity, will be kept ever secret, unless revelation is necessary to perform my duty. I will never act viciously or prevent personal feelings, prejudices, political beliefs, aspirations, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime, and with others prosecution criminals, I will enforce law courteously and appropriately, without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force of violence, and never accepting gratuities. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held as long as I am true to the ethics of police service. I will never engage in acts of bribery, nor will I condone such acts by other police officers. I will cooperate with all legally authorized agencies and their representatives to do justice. I know that I alone am responsible for my standard of professional performance. And will take every opportunity to enhance and improve my level of knowledge and confidence. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself for God my choice profession. No longer sir! 73rd. Dismissed. Sir, the 73rd base cabinet has 18. 